Okay. All right, so now we're going to talk about something called conditional probabilities. Okay. And the idea behind conditional probabilities is that we are now going to give you some information about, uh, about the person or, or about whatever it is, and that will affect the probability that we're talking about, okay? So, for example, uh, you know, here's a, um, you know, so here's, here's a silly example, okay? We can say, you know, if we went around the world and we said, what is the probability, I'm gonna select a person completely at random, and I say, what is the probability that this person can speak English. Okay, so this is someone, you know, so I, every single person in the world has an equal chance of being selected. We can say, and we can say, what is the probability that this person can speak English? Okay, and I have no idea how, uh, how prevalent English is as, a, as the worldwide language, but let's say that answer is, I don't know, 35% or something like that. Okay, I'm just making something up here. Okay. So if we select someone at random from the entire world, what's the probability that this person can speak English? Who knows? Maybe 30-something 30, 30 percent, okay? I'm just making that up. However, I can now say uh, I'm going to pick someone at random from the world. Oh, we found out this person is from the United States, okay? And the question now is what is the probability that this person can speak English, okay? Now, now we've know, like we picked the person and we found out, oh, this person that we randomly selected is actually from the United States. What's the probability that this person can speak English? It's probably now like 95% or something like that, okay? So knowing that the person who is selected is from the US now dramatically changes the overall probability that someone can speak English, okay? And so with conditional probabilities, what we're saying is that, you know, we are going to give you a key piece of information, okay, or maybe not even key piece of information. So we, um, you know, we have a little bit more information, and we ask, what is the probability now, okay? Okay, so you know, I'll just put our example of example here. So we're going to say, you know, we pick a person at random from the world. Okay, so part A is what is the probability this person? Okay, and again, I'm just making this up. We're going to say 0.35. Made up number. <laughs> okay, um, B, we can say same thing, but we find out this person is from the United States. Okay. Now it's like, or, or something like that, maybe higher, maybe lower, I don't know, something, something around there, okay? Almost everyone in the U.S. Uh, can speak English, you know, uh, we do have, well, the, in the U.S. we have a significant uh, immigrant population, and so, or, or just people who, who don't speak um, English. Uh, you know, if you go to some other place, like 
what percentage of people in uh, China can speak Chinese, that's going to be, well, I guess some form of Chinese being either Mandarin or Cantonese or is another form of Chinese, uh, that's going to be like 100% or 90, maybe not 100, but 99%, something, something like that, okay? Um, okay, so, uh, so that's, this is the concept of conditional probabilities. We write this, okay? So part A, we would write this as probability of English, okay? That would, this is how we would write this thing. Part B, we would write probability of English, and I write a vertical bar to say the piece of information that we know is that this person's from the United States. Okay? And so a conditional probability okay, is written okay, and we read this read as probability of A given B, okay? Which basically means, what is the probability of A happening if we know that B has happened. Or if we know that B is true, okay? Okay, so what is the probability of A given B? What is the probability that A will happen if we know B? Okay, and that B can be that the person is from the U.S., it could be something else. Okay, so let's, uh, let's try this out, okay? Uh, I'm going to use uh, this, the same information here. Can I uh, flip to the next? Looks like some of you guys are still writing a little bit. Okay, so let's uh, put this up there, and I'm going to write. Um, so the way we calculate things is the probability of A given B, this is equal to the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. Okay, so, so basically this is saying, you know, what's the probability that A and B will happen and we're going to divide that. We're going to say, but we're going to limit our universe basically to just to the scenarios where B has happened. Okay? And so notice, if I were to switch the labels of B and A, okay, what would I have? I would have probability of B given A. What goes on the top? I'm just switching... Wherever I see A, I'm going to put B, and wherever I put B, I'm going to see A. Put A, okay? So this is probability of B and A divided by the probability of A. Exactly, okay? Now, um, one thing that's a good thing to know is that the probability of uh, A and B is the same as the probability of B and A, okay? What's the probability that someone is married and has less than high school? That's going to be the same thing as what's the probability that someone has less than high school and is married, okay? So probability of A and B is the same as the probability of B and A. Okay, so you can swap those, swap those letters. But on the bottom, the denominator changes, okay? So these, they sound similar, they look similar, but they're different, okay? Don't, don't mix these up. Okay, so I'm going to... Um, I'll write a couple questions here. I'm going to say, 
what is, uh, so we, we, we pick someone at random. Okay, what is the probability this person is, um, is a widower, widow or widower, and has a college uh, education or higher. Okay. So this is a probability that this person is a widow, widower, and has a college education or higher. We would write this as, how would, how would we write this? I'll write P of, and just write widow and college. And what's our answer here? Three divided by 665. Okay. Now our thing changes, okay? We're gonna say, um, I pick someone at random. We pick someone at random. What is the probability this person is a widow a widower, given the person went to college, or a person has a college education or higher. Okay. So here, we would say this is the probability of what goes first. Are we asking is the what's the probability that this person's a, a widower or what's the probability that this person went to college? Yeah, so we're gonna put uh, widow, widower up here, and then we're gonna write the vertical bar for given and given this means that we know the person has a college education or something, okay? And so this, we would write probability of widow in college. And on the bottom, we would divide by what? Probability of college. Okay? And so, you know, up top, you know, this can be um, the probability of widow in college is going to be 3 over 665. And the probability of college, what's the probability of college? 143 over 665. Now, when you have the table, you can just kind of skip the 665 business and you can just go 3 over 143. We can say. Given someone went to college, now we are reducing our possible pe people to just these 143 people, okay? As soon as we find out that this person went to college, when it says given the person has a college education, we don't have to worry about 665 people anymore. We only have to worry about these 143 people. Out of these 143 people, how many um, are widows or widowers? Three of them. So our answer is going to be three out of 143. Okay, contrast this question. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing. Pick at random. And we're gonna say, what is the probability that this person has a college education given the person is a widow or widower. Okay. And 
And so in this case, we have probability of college given widow. And so on top, we have the same answer, probability of widow in college, or college and widow, it doesn't matter, the order on top. But the bottom, we're going to put probability of widow, or widower on the bottom. Okay, and so what is, what is the answer here? 3 over 61. 3 over 61. Okay. Uh, I'll leave this up for uh, a little bit here, and I want you to clearly understand the difference between all three of these questions, okay? And, uh, and if you are presented with a table, um, you should be able to answer the question whether, you know, I could just present the question, I could just say, what's the probability of this, and write it symbolically. Or I can ask, you know, what's the probability, whoops, uh, and I can write it out in words. And I want you guys to be familiar with, uh, with all of these forms and, and to be comfortable seeing, seeing this. Okay, so notice these, these questions look similar, but they are different. Are there any questions? Okay. <laughs> All right, we're, uh, we'll continue then. And so then there's this concept of independent events, okay? Independence versus dependence. Okay. And so we talk about independence when we're talking about two events. Two events are independent if the outcome of one of one event has no influence on the outcome of the other event. So uh, here's okay. Here, here's an example. We could say, you know, um, so two events that are dependent. Okay, dependent events means the outcome of one does influence the outcome of the other. Okay. So on the other hand, dependent events. All right, so I could say, um, uh, so we'll, we'll say, you know, there's the fictional town of Smallville, okay? Fictional town of Smallville, and, um, and we can just say, hey, what's the probability that it's going to rain tomorrow in Smallville, okay? And you say, well, I don't know, 30%, whatever, okay? So maybe, maybe the probability that it rains tomorrow is 30%, okay? I can say, well... It rained today in Smallville. It rained today in Smallville, so um, does that change your answer? If it rained today in Smallville, what do you think the probability that it is that it will rain tomorrow? It's not affected. Huh? It's not affected. Uh, it, it probably, you know, if it rains, you know, if it rains today, it's probably more likely to rain tomorrow than if, than if we knew it didn't rain today, okay? And so in that case, raining today and raining tomorrow those are dependent events because if it rains today, it's more likely to rain tomorrow than if it didn't rain today, right? Okay, that's, um, 
On the other hand, you know, we could say, you know, what's the probability that it's going to rain tomorrow? And your answer is this. And we can say, oh, um, well, hang on a second. Um, uh, I ate a pizza today. Okay? All right. Does, does that change your answer then about whether it's going to rain tomorrow? No, all right? Unless, unless I have like some strange pizza eating habits where I'm only going to eat pizza when, um, you know, the weather looks like a certain way, you know, whether someone eats pizza or not is not going to affect the, uh, the weather the next day, okay? And so eating pizza and the weather would be independent, okay? But, uh, you know, the weather from one day to another day, those are, those are related. So those are dependent events, okay? So... Um, so what does this look like, okay? So if events A and B are independent, okay, then the probability of A given B, okay, is going to equal, so if A and B are independent, that means the outcome of B has no influence on the outcome of A, or the outcome of A has no influence on the outcome of B, okay? So I could ask you, what's the probability that A is going to happen? And you tell me the probability that A is going to happen is the probability of A, okay? I'm going to say, okay, hang on. What's the probability of A happening, and keep this in mind, B has happened? Okay, that's what we're essentially saying here. What's the probability that A is going to happen if we know that B has happened? Okay. And what would your answer be if you know that A and B are independent? This would just be the probability of A. Because knowing whether B has happened or not has no influence on the probability of A. Okay? So these events are independent. So... Whether B has happened or not, that has no influence on the probability of A. So the probability of A, given that B has happened, is still just the probability of A. Okay? So I could say, you know, what's the, you know I'm going to flip a coin. What's the probability that it lands heads? You would say 0.5. And you say, okay, well, well, hang on. The last flip, it landed tails. Is your answer going to change about the next coin flip? No, because we know one coin flip to the next coin flip is independent. So even though it landed tails earlier, I'm not going to say, oh, now it's more likely to land heads or less likely to land heads. Whether it lands heads or, heads or not is independent of the previous coin flip. Okay? So here we could say, you know, the probability that a coin lands heads is equal to 0.5. And we can say probability that you know, I'll say next flip is heads. Given last flip is tails, this is still 0.5. And that's because the next flip is independent of the last flip. Okay, this is, this is just the same as the probability that the next flip is heads. Is that okay, this concept of independence? Okay, so what does this look like um, when we're dealing with maybe a table of data here? Or, sorry, do, do I need to go back, or, or is that okay? No, no response here. Okay. <laughs> um, all right, so let's say... Um, okay, I don't know. All right, let's say um, we can ask... We, we surveyed people... And we'll say male 
or female, and then um, uh, we can say, you know, has pink clothes. Okay, and this would be does not have pink clothes. All right. Uh, okay, and so we can say, you know, let's say we surveyed a uh, hundred males and a uh, hundred ten females. Okay, out of the hundred males, how many do you think have pink clothes? Five. Sure. Uh, we'll, we'll say 10. Okay, I don't know. All right. And out of the 110 females, how many do you think have pink clothes? <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll say, um, I don't know. Uh, we'll say 80. Okay, I don't know. This is, this is a silly thing, right? Okay, I don't know. It's a silly thing. I have no idea. Okay, so then... Um, you know, a total of 90 people have pink clothes and 120 people don't have pink clothes. Okay. So then we ask, is, so you guys already know the answer, okay, but is being um, male or female, it doesn't matter, but is, is being male, here, we'll, we'll say, is being female independent of are independent from uh, having pink clothes. Okay, and what is what is your answer here? Yes. No. What what does it mean to be independent? It, independent means one outcome has no influence on the other outcome. Okay, so. If we know someone is female, does that make this person more likely or less likely to own pink clothes? More likely, okay? So the outcome of one does influence the outcome of the other, okay? Or on, on the converse, we go, you know, just imagine something, you know, you, you peek in a drawer and you don't actually see the actual clothes, but you say, oh, there's some pink clothes in here, okay? Do you think the owner of this drawer is male? More likely to be male or more likely to be female? More likely to be female, right? Knowing that someone owns pink clothes, suddenly that makes so. So the answer here is being f female independent from having pink clothes? The answer is no. They are not independent, okay? And we can check this. We can say, well, what is the probability of pink pink clothes given female, okay? What is this equal to? Any, anybody? 80 over 110, thank you, all right? Can, can we see that? 80 over 110, okay? And what is the probability that some uh, of just pink clothes in general? That would be, I should put 210 there. This would be 90 over 210, okay? And so if they were independent, if they were independent, then probability of A given B would equal the probability of A, okay? Is that the case? is the probability of pink clothes given female equal to probability of pink clothes. Okay, well, 80 divided by 110 is 0 0.727. Seven two seven three, and what's the probability of pink clothes? Ninety over two ten. This is zero point four two four two nine. 
Are these things equal? Not equal. Not equal, so not independent. Okay, please make sure you understand this example. Okay, and then just to contrast, I'll, I'll give you an example where, where they are independent, okay? I'll let you guys write this down. What's that? Just yeah, you can say they are dependent. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay, I'm going to flip the slide. Okay, so let's say um, we can look at a deck of cards. Okay. And we can say a card is either a face card. So face card is uh, the jack, the queen, and the king. Those are the only face cards in a deck. The ace is not a face card. Uh, there's no face on the ace. It's a high value card, but it's not technically a face card, okay? Or not a face card. Okay, and then we can say uh, the card is a heart or not a heart. Not hearts. Okay. How many hearts total do we have in the deck? Thirteen. How many hearts are face cards? Three. How many hearts are not face cards? Ten. Okay. How many um, non hearts are there? You'd have uh, three suits, right? Uh, Clubs, diamonds, and uh, spades. Yeah, clubs, diamonds, spades. Okay, so you got 39. How many are face cards? Nine, right? Three in each suit. How many are not face cards? 30. Three in each suit. Okay, you're going to have 12 face cards total, 40 cards that are not face cards for a total of 52. Okay. Is... Um, being is a card being heart independent of being a face card? This is our question. Okay, well, to test this, we're going to say what is the probability that a card is a heart? Or here we can, well, maybe we'll do it this way, it doesn't matter. Okay, what is the probability that a card is a face card? Okay, what is the probability that a card is a face card if we know that the card is a heart? Okay, so what's the probability that a card is a face card? What's that? 12 face cards total out of 52 in the deck, right? So we have 12 out of 12 out of 52, this is the probability that a card is a face card. What is the probability that a card is a face card given that the card is a heart? Okay, so once we tell it, we have um, that it's given hearts, that means we've reduced the cards that we have to worry about just to these 13, right? We don't have to worry about these non-heart cards anymore. Okay, so, so here our denominator is going to be 13. How many of those are face cards? Three of them. Okay? And the question is, you know, is probability of A given B equal to the probability of A? Okay? Or is probability of face card given heart equal to the probability of face card? Okay? Well, what's the probability of face card given heart? 3 over 13. This is 0 0.23077, or point, I'll just write 0 0.2308. Okay. What is the probability of face card? 12 over 52. 
exact same number. So uh, these are equal, so they are independent. Okay. Now, do not mess this part up, okay? Sometimes, sometimes people will ask the wrong question. They'll say, is probability of face card given heart equal to the probability of a heart? Okay? And you do the math here, they are not going to be equal. And then they're going to say, well, they're, because they're not equal, they are dependent. But this is the wrong thing to check, okay? The, these will not be equal, okay? But this is the wrong thing to check. Okay? Or another one is, you know, is probability of face card given heart, is that equal to probability of heart given face card, okay? These will also not be equal, but that, again, is the wrong thing to check, okay? So um, you want to check the right relationship, and if this does equal this, probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A, so somewhere, you know, I recommend saying, you know what, I'm going to make face card, this is going to be event A. Um, and I'm going to make hearts event B, okay? And then clearly you can say, well, whenever I see A, I'm going to put face card. Whenever I see B, I'm going to put heart. And over here, when I see A, I'm going to put face card. Then you'll get the right relationship, okay? So right, you know... When you start off, say, is probability of A given B equal to probability of A? And then somewhere say, A is face card, B is heart, and then put those words in there, and then you'll have the right relationship to check, okay? All too often on quizzes and things like that, I see people checking the wrong relationship, coming to the wrong conclusion. So don't do that. Okay, so those are... Um, that's to check if events are independent or dependent. Okay. Uh, we have this concept of mutually exclusive. Okay. Mutually exclusive means that if one event happens, the other is impossible. Okay, so this could be um, A could be card is heart, and B could be card is spade. Okay, if we know that a card is a heart, we know that B is impossible. Okay, a card cannot be both heart and spade at the same time. Okay, if one event happens, the other is impossible. Okay. If two events are mutually exclusive, could they be independent? Or are they independent? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and the answer is no. Okay, if two events are mutually exclusive, they are definitely not independent. Why is that? What is the definition of independence? The outcome of one event has no influence on the other event, right? What is mutually exclusive? If one event happens, the outcome of one event makes the other event impossible, okay? So that, this is clearly one event has influence on the other event, right? Has influence on whether the outcome of the other event. So mutually exclusive events are most definitely not independent because the outcome of one makes the other impossible, whereas independent says the outcome of one has no no bearing on the other one.
Okay. So, you know, mutually exclusive events are most definitely are not independent events. Okay. Um, we have uh, this concept of sequences of independent events. So I'm going to flip flip the slide one more or another time here, and we're going to do a bunch of uh, sequences of independent events. Okay, so this this rule only applies when events are independent, okay? So if A and B are independent, then the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B, okay? If they're not independent, this does not this does not work okay this thing only works again this equation works only when a and b are independent okay okay and and this works for you know quote larger sequences you know if a b c and d are independent Okay, then the probability of all of them, of A and B and C and D, is equal to the product of all of them. Probability of A times the probability of B times the probability of C times the probability of D. Okay, and, and so on and so forth. Okay, so if you've got a bunch of independent events, you can just multiply each of those outcomes together. All right, so let's let's try out an example here. Okay, what is it? You know, I, I will flip a coin four times. What is the probability I get the sequence heads, heads, tails, heads? Okay. So I'm going to flip it four times. What's the probability that I get this exact sequence? Okay, so I so the outcomes. So each flip is independent, right? So whether I get tails on the third flip ha has no impact on the fourth flip and is not influenced by the first two flips. Okay, so because they're all independent, I can just multiply all of these together. So the sequence is heads, heads, tails. Heads, okay? What is the probability of each of these? Probability of each event. Okay, what's the probability I get heads on the first flip? Yeah, 0.5. Okay, what's the probability I get heads on the second flip? 0.5. What's the probability I get tails on the third flip? 0.5. And what's the probability I get heads on the last flip? 0.5. Okay, so here, uh, this is the probability of each one. So the total probability is going to just be each of these probabilities multiplied together. So I'm going to just do 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, or we just write 0.5 raised to the fourth. Okay, and we say this is 0.1625. Or 1 in 16.
Okay, so for our so good, is that okay? All right, we can uh, we can change change this around to a little bit. Okay. Um, let's say the coin is. I don't know, biased, a biased coin. I don't know if these things actually exist, but we'll say we've got some, you know, a trick coin. So now, this means uh, the probability of the coin landing heads is going to be 0.7, and the probability that it lands tails will then be what? 0.3, right? Okay, assuming that there's only those two outcomes, we're going to just ignore any possibility that it lands on its side or that it something else happens to it, okay? So we're going to just say it lands heads or it lands tails. Probability that it lands heads is now 0.7. Probability that it lands tails is 0.3. Is this okay? All right, I'm going to say um, I will flip the coin four times. What is the probability I get heads all four flips, all four times? What is the, uh, what is the sequence that must happen? And what is the resulting probability there? Okay, so, you're, so it has to be, so the first flip must land heads, the second flip must land heads, and the third flip, and the last flip heads, right? What is the probability I get heads? So this is the sequence of events that must happen, okay? Sequence of events. Okay, and what's the probability of each of these? So the probabilities would be 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.7. Each of these have 0.7. So the, the combined probability is I just multiply these numbers together. So I'm going to just do 0 0.7 raised to the fourth power, which is like 0 0.2401, I believe. No, 0.2401. OK. And that's our answer. Was the probability I get heads all four times? It happens about 24% of the time, okay? If you've got this biased coin that works this way, okay? What is the probability that I get heads on the first three and tails on the last flip? Okay? So what's the sequence that must happen here? It must go. Sometimes I feel like I'm talking to myself. Heads, 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 then tails, right? OK, and the probabilities associated with it's going to be 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.7, and 0.3, right? So I multiply all these together. So I'm going to have, what, 0.7 to the third times 0.3, or I, I mean, I, could, I can do this. Um, 0.7 times 0.7 times 0.7 times 0.3. I can just type it in that way, and I get 0 0.1029. Okay. What is the probability I get zero heads? So what is the sequence that must happen to get end up with zero heads? It must be tails, 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 tails. 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. So I multiply all those together. I get 0 0.3 to the fourth. I think that's 0 0.081 or 0081. Let's see. 0.0081. OK. This is what we get. Is this OK? Yeah. All right. OK. So notice this question. I'm going to copy this question over yeah, along with its answer of point. 1029 onto the next slide. You don't have to copy it over because it should be in your notes, right? OK. Contrast this question. What's the probability I get heads on the first three and tails on the last flip versus 
you know, I flip it four times, I flip the coin four times. What is the probability uh, it lands tails once, okay? Which implies and heads the other times, heads the other three times. Is it the same answer as this? No, there's a, there's a difference here, right? What is the probability that it lands tails once and heads the other three times? And, and we're going to say the order doesn't matter. Order, order does not matter in this case. OK, so here, there are four ways this could happen. I can go heads, 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 tails. And we have this probability. And the probability of this thing um, is equal to 0 0.1029. Okay, it could also go heads, heads. The tails could be the third flip. I can get heads, tails, heads, heads, and tails, heads, heads, heads. Okay, is that okay? And each of these, if you look at if you look at it, this one's going to be what 0 0.7 times 0 0.7 times 0.3 times 0.7, it, it's the same, right? It's 0.7 to the third times 0.3. They're all going to be 0.7 to the third times 0.3. They're all going to have the same probability. It's just the order, the order has changed a little bit, OK? So this one's going to be 0 0.1029. This one will also have, I, again, I'm, I'm doing what I said not to do. Um, I should say the probability is equal to 0 0.1029, and the probability is equal to 0 0.1029. Okay, so the probabilities of each of these is 0 0.1029. So the total probability of, it's basically of this happening, or this happening, or this happening, or this happening, right? I would just add all of those together. Is there any w overlap that I have to worry about subtracting out? Is it possible to get a sequence that goes heads, 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 tails, and at the same time have a sequence going heads, heads, tails, heads? No. Well, if you've got four flips, you're either going to get one or the other, or, or you cannot have, there's no overlap to worry about. So there's no overlap to subtract out. So we're going to have um, the probability of three heads and one tail, any order, is equal to four times 0 0.1029, giving me. Four one one six. Okay. This is a little um, complex. Okay, but I want to I wanted to kind of illustrate we can use these simple rules of multiplication and whatnot, and a little bit of thinking to answer some of these slightly more complex problems. Next week we're going to learn that this type of problem actually has a special name called the binomial, OK? All right, one last example. One last example. And this is, this is a little bit of a brain twister here, OK? We're going to, same thing. We've got the biased coin, lands heads with probability 0.7, tails with probability 0.3, OK? But I'm going to just change, change it up a tiny bit, OK? So we've still got the biased coin. Uh, I flip it four. I flip the coin four times. The biased coin. <coughs> what is the probability that it lands heads at least one time? Okay, what does it mean for the coin to have landed heads at least one time? Yeah, it could land one time. That satisfies. It could land two times. That satisfies. It could land three times, or it could land heads all four times. And any of those outcomes is okay, right? So to calculate this, this could be, you know, here, I'll, I'll write out the complicated way to calculate it. 
complicated way to answer. Okay, we would find probability of heads one time, tails three times. Okay, plus probability of, I'm going to just write heads two times, tails two times, plus probability of heads three times, tails one time, plus probability of heads all four times. Okay, now we've actually calculated this, heads all four times, we found that earlier to be 0.2401. We found this one on the previous slide to be 0.4116, okay? But then we would have to do this math and this math, and I don't feel like doing that, okay? There's an easier way, okay? What is the one outcome that I'm not including here that's possible when you flip the coin four times? Getting tails four times, right? Okay. So the only way this fails, what is the probability that the head lands at least one time? This, the only way this doesn't happen, okay, is if we get tails all four times. All four times, which means we got zero heads. Okay? And this is, this and these form all the possible outcomes, right? So if we add all of these together, all of their probabilities would add up to, to one, right? Okay? Either so just think of it this way, okay? We can think of this, to answer this, either one of two things happens, okay? Okay, either you get the coin lands heads zero times, or the coin lands heads at least once. Is there any other possibility? We're flipping a coin four times. Either it lands heads zero times or it has landed heads once. There's no other possibility here. Okay? These are the only two possible outcomes. So if I want to know what's the probability that the coin lands heads at least once, Another way I can get this answer is I could do find the probability that the coin lands had zero times, subtract that probability from one, and then I will get this, right? Because these two events are complements. Okay, are, are, are we following this? Okay, so what we have is that the probability a coin lands heads at least once is equal to 1 minus the probability that the coin lands heads zero times. Yeah? Do we know the answer to the probability that the coin lands heads zero times? 0.3 to the fourth, right? We did that on the previous page. So this probability was 0.3 raised to the fourth. So the answer is going to be 1 minus that. So I get, um, so this is 1 minus 0 0.0081, and that gives me 0.9919, I think. 1 minus 0.3 raised to the fourth, yeah, 0.9919. Okay, so uh, so look at this. I hope that makes sense. I've, I've tried to walk us through the, the thinking of this, right? Either the coin lands heads zero times or it has landed heads at least once, okay? And so trying to answer it this way is complicated. I think this way is much more simple. Okay, was there a question? We're good? Okay, well then uh, have a great week. We'll see you guys uh, next Tuesday.